I never thought I would have the opportunity to be someone that people would look up to. To give back to the girls in Costa Rica is something that I've been carrying in my heart a long time because of my story. My best friends were mainly boys because they were the ones that played soccer. Whenever a car came, you yelled, carro, like car's coming, so you stop. We used to put two rocks just to put the goals. Soccer is just such a huge part of the culture that we would make the space. Three main places we would play against each other would be my neighborhood, my school, and my dad's soccer lessons every Saturday. Yo enseñaba técnicas fundamentos de fútbol y yo veía que ella era disciplinada, muy coordinada y que a ella le gustaba. He always says like I just saw the talent that you had, like I didn't care you were a girl or a boy. He pushed me a lot. They always make it a point to remember how hard it was to make it to the national team, to keep that passion alive in me because if you take things for granted, you lose what makes it special. Culturalmente en Costa Rica y en, en toda esta área de Centroamérica era mal visto que las mujeres jugaran fútbol. De hecho no había apoyo, no era normal y los papás, las familias prohibían a las mujeres jugar fútbol. Yeah, I would get, like, I would cry all the time <laughs> in anger or frustration or just by myself. Um, my frustration was the lack of opportunities. I just couldn't understand why we didn't have the same resources as the men. And I couldn't understand why people wouldn't come to watch us play. As you grow up, like men just get a little more than women and then and then you know we would go out train just like they did and they had their locker rooms, we would have to go to the public bathroom to change. I wanted to play soccer so bad that even at a certain time I was like, well, I wish I was a boy then. I also realized that maybe I was born with a purpose. There were other women who were born way earlier than me and they even had less. They were just as passionate as me and I just happened to be a little luckier than they were. Yes, things can be better, but guess who changes the future? It's the people who are here right now and it's me with so many other women that you know, have paved the way for me and then that's the same thing I'm gonna do for the next generations and I'm very grateful for that and I'm embracing that I was so focused on what I didn't have, and that steals a joy from what you do have. I can be at peace with myself in the fact that I'm doing everything I can to change that. Sometimes it's like, oh my gosh, there's still so much work to do in women's soccer. But I was part of the clinic, and that was one of the moments where I was like, hey, we are making progress. It is happening. That was the field where we used to train under the rain, like literally storming. It was very symbolic for me personally. It makes me so happy to be able to be part of something like this. I'm just a soccer player, but at the same time, I never had a Costa Rican soccer player that I would look up to. A lot of the girls wanted to take photos with me or they wanted me to sign their shirts or a piece of paper that they brought. They kept hugging me. <laughs> which I'll take it, you know, <laughs> free hugs. They seem starstruck. I don't know, I feel weird saying that. Anything that's gonna empower girls to do what they wanna do. It takes passionate people to do things that aren't easy. I'm so grateful to have been part of that group of players that have been changing little by little the 
the story, the story of women's soccer. Hey. Woo!